At the very end of the summer, I made and set up this wild aquarium pond hybrid thing. I think it turned out pretty good. I just cut two square holes in this planter and siliconed some glass to each side. That way we could see our white cloud minnows from three different angles. When the weather turned, I decided to move this thing inside. That way we could enjoy it all winter long and it fits perfectly in the corner of the room. Only issue was that this thing is a little wonky and I wasn't sure if it was gonna leak or not. There's still a few things that we need to improve on, but two months later, did this thing end up leaking though? That is the question, and I think that probably looks way better, huh? No, this thing has not leaked yet. Um, it's not quite bulletproof, like I wouldn't shoot a you know what at it or anything, or even bump it like with this chair as I cram myself into the corner here. But now the tank has been doing really good. It's super low maintenance, just the way I like them these days. Low maintenance aquariums that also look good are like the best ever. You know, it's definitely a win-win situation. That's how I think of it, or it, you know, I'm trying to make every tank be a win-win situation like that. And I think we're gonna achieve it with this one. Like so far, it's been, what, a month? And I think the tank looks good. It's had its little issues and whatnot, but everything's been super manageable. I think the tank looks good, even though the plants aren't really growing. And I think in the long term, this thing is gonna continue to develop and just end up looking really, really good. Besides needing to maybe figure out a different lighting situation, this tank is pretty much just chilling and it will for the rest of the winter. And then it'll be next summer and we'll take this thing outside and all of my hard work will get transformed and destroyed by the sun. So I'm really looking forward to that. I've only changed the water now twice on this thing. You're gonna see the only the second time me ever doing it here while I go through and suck out some of the detritus and junk that was down at the bottom here. I did one little 50% water change probably like a week and a half after I set it up. There was just a little bit of that typical stuff down at the bottom of the substrate that, you know, wasn't doing any harm to the tank, but it looked a little gross, so we removed it. I think a lot of that came from just the back bacterial decomposition in this thing. When you add something like a pea silly or a pothos, whatever, a house plant to an aquarium, you're gonna go through a little period where there might be an ammonia spike, there might be some additional junk, maybe some new microbes sort of taken over, just because those roots are gonna break down a little bit. It wasn't something that really impacted us though, because I think when we put the fish in here, we also put in some Fritz nitrifying bacteria to kind of help the cycle get going. So I never saw any ammonia in this tank, but even if we didn't do that, I still don't think we would have seen it even though we did put the plant in and you know, we put fish in, we're starting a new aquarium and a new cycle. It's just one of those things where it's like nitrogen, it's easy for it to be the bad guy, but it's really not something that I think you should be thinking about too much. At least I don't. And I think we'll talk about that a little bit later too. The minnows are doing great in this thing. I don't think I've gotten any written complaints from them. The water still is a little bit turbid. We aren't running a filter or anything to help reduce that. And you know, I was just kind of in this tank cleaning up a bunch of stuff. The plants aren't doing really great either. And that I'm sure is sort of adding to the amount of waste in the tank, the breakdown of those plants. I think that's really just a side effect of the plants not actively growing because of our light source issue. But I'm gonna try this new positioning of the little kind of dumb light thing that we have on here to see if that helps. Like the spectrum of this light isn't ideal probably, but I don't think it's something that's gonna hinder these plants from maybe growing a little bit more. I don't know, I guess we'll just see what happens. Like, it's just kind of whatever. This is a tank that hangs out in the corner. It looks good from afar and that's really what I want it for. As long as it's good for the fish, which it is, I don't have anything to worry about and that's exactly what I want. I want a super low maintenance thing that looks good. I'm happy with our substrate choice. You know, we pick something lighter to go with like the all black background of it. And so it really just puts an emphasis on the fish and the plants, even though the plants aren't looking the best. Again, this all goes back to the light source and it being super dim and the peacefully blocking the light for the most part. So I think if we change that and we get maybe, maybe like a second light, like we leave this one here and then get something else to sort of illuminate the peace lily, then I think this could actually turn into like a legit planted tank, pond or you know, whatever we're calling this thing. The creeping Jenny on the sides is also doing pretty good. Like the stuff that's hanging way down here gets nibbled on by my rabbit, which probably I shouldn't let happen, but I just kind of tucked this piece over to the side so that wouldn't happen. But you know, it gets a little bit of daylight from the window that's right here, but not a ton. Like the peace lily is a super, low maintenance terrestrial plant, I guess. Like it doesn't need a ton of light. Not sure exactly how I'm structuring this video, but you probably already saw me trimming off like the flowers that died off. Um, but we do have some new leaves that are growing. And so I think overall this plant is gonna do fine. It, it might decide to grow a little bit slower because it's not getting like any sort of direct or diffused light, just like really 
being in the corner of this room doesn't help. But I think it's gonna do okay. I think at this point too, the root system is done breaking itself down. But that I think has contributed to the fact that we've had some surface film issues on this tank. That's gonna happen no matter what because we're not, you know, running any circulation in it. We're not running any air. So that oily film on the top is mixed in with some bacteria. It goes through phases. It certainly did here where we had a little bit of a thicker layer of actual bacteria. Now that's pretty much passed, but we still do have some oil slickiness. One of the things you can do to combat that is just, of course, the hydrogen peroxide. I think this is one of like the most important tools that I will always have in my fish room is that hydrogen peroxide bottle. It can really knock down a surface film. It obviously isn't solving the problem of why you have it, but in the in-between time that a lot of these problems can be isolated to, it helps out a lot. You do have to be a little careful with hydrogen peroxide, specifically if you're shooting it underwater like this, because it's gonna dissolve a little easier. You can hurt your fish. You can definitely shoot way more. We don't have to on this tank because this doesn't have a surface film, but just be aware of that, that this can be a dangerous move, especially on small volumes of water. I'm sure there's info online for like how many sprays of 3% you can do in X amount of water before it might become a problem. I don't know off the top of my head. And beyond the hydrogen peroxide, another thing that I think everybody who has a fish room should have is a bottle of just some rubbing alcohol. I get these little spray bottles. This one happens to be 91%, but you can get a lower percentage if you prefer. I use this stuff not for surface films on the top, although I guess technically you could, as long as you're spraying just a little bit. We don't wanna give our fish too much alcohol. I don't think they're old enough. But I use this for mainly spraying down my hands if I'm going in between tanks. Like that's only if I have to be really, really careful though. Like I'm not just doing it um, when I'm going between like tanks in here, but in legit fish shoot headquarters where I'm doing some of the feeding trial stuff where I really don't want to cross contaminate, I'll definitely just spray that all over my hands and up my arms a little bit, whatever's been in a tank, just so I can cut down on the frequency of like cross contamination. You can also do this for like nets and little algae scrapers and tools where maybe you have to work in a tank that has a really bad algae infestation and you don't want to accidentally transfer it over. Just soak those tools, you know, spray your hands and you don't have to worry about it. Your hands might get a little dry, but I mean, such is life. So with this tank being about, I don't know, a month and a half, two months since we set it up, and since we just did that water change with my soft water, we're sort of transitioning this thing back into a softer water tank. I'm curious about the minerals in the water, but then also we'll be able to see the nitrogen content of the water and touch back on that. I think I said that earlier that we would talk about nitrogen. Let's do a test strip and just see what we can find in here. I know we just did a water change, but even though you know we did a 50% water change, if there was any nitrogen in here or anything alarming, we'd still see a little bit of it. It looks like we're going back to some softer water conditions. That makes sense because we didn't remineralize that water we just put in. And then also we got nitrite, nitrate, at pretty much, I mean, undetectable zero. So if we did have any in there to begin with, which I doubt we did, it was a very small amount and we're back to zero. Here's a little tip about nitrogen. So when you do your test kit and you know, whatever it is, if it's a liquid test kit, if it's a strip, doesn't really matter. With the strips, you only see nitrite and nitrate. And a lot of the time, like I wanna say like 98% of the time, that's all you need to know. If you don't see nitrite or nitrate on the test strip, there's probably not any ammonia in the water and you don't even need to check it. That might sound like some irresponsible fish keeping, but I promise you it's not because the only time that there would be ammonia in the water and no nitrite or nitrate is when you're just starting up a cycle. Like you just set up an aquarium, you, maybe you're doing a fish in cycle, you put your fish in and there will be like a two, three, maybe a four day window where there's actually ammonia. No nitrite, no nitrate. That ammonia is gonna get used up real quick and turn into nitrite. And then eventually you won't see any ammonia and you'll probably never see it again. Those two later species of the nitrogen train are being consumed just as the ammonia is being consumed. Like there would have to be a really rare dysfunctional thing happening for there to be ammonia and no nitrite or nitrate, if that makes sense. And even if that test strip did have nitrite and or nitrate on it, I still would bet you a million dollars there wasn't any ammonia in here because ammonia is kind of like the hot chick at the party. Everybody wants it. Plants want to consume it, bacteria want to consume it. It's just a short-lived thing in a tank. That's why when you do, you know, you're cycling your aquarium, you're gonna see an ammonia spike. It's a spike because it goes up and it goes down. The other species of nitrogen are a little bit different. They are not the hot chick at the party. So nitrite, nobody really wants that except for, you know, the nitrobacter species of 
bacteria. Maybe there's some archaea that want it too. I don't know, there's probably a bunch of things that could use nitrite, but they don't really want to use it because it doesn't yield a lot of energy for them, at least like microbes that use those things for energy. It's also more likely to see a buildup of nitrite and nitrate compared to like something like ammonia where everybody wants it. I would see the buildup of nitrite in my rice fish tubs because again, that's a situation where there's no filter, there's not enough space. The nitrite oxidizers need a little bit more room because they need a bigger population to handle the load that's coming through. We've been talking about nitrogen for way too long. Sorry for getting off so hard on a tangent like this, but I think moral of the story is don't worry so much about nitrogen. It's okay. A little bit is not going to hurt anybody, especially if your pH is low like mine. But again, I'm going to stop boring you to death. If you want to go check out a really good nitrogen video, check out the one I made like 11 years ago. Quick field trip. So in the last video, we added what I thought were all of my wonderful minnows that we collected this summer into the, the tanks over here. You guys saw that. And for whatever reason, I wasn't very observant. I assumed they were minnows because they had to be. Like, I did the math. We got the plants from the minnow pond. There's only minnows there. Those fish had to be minnows. They weren't. They were all rice fish. It was pretty obvious that they were. I should have figured it out like a month ago. But in this bowl right here, which is going to be really impossible to see, we do have some minnows, so all is not lost. These have to be minnows because I pulled them out as fry from the minnow pond, put them in here with other fish that I also assumed were minnows, but do look like rice fish. And we can tell the difference because the minnows are the larger ones that are lower in the water level, and they have that darker color, they move differently than the other fish that are higher up. So yeah, I mean, there's not much more to the story than that. Um, I guess maybe these smaller fish could still be minnows and they're just younger. Like, I'm hoping that's the case, but they definitely look like rice fish. It's not the 40 plus that I thought I was going to have, but it's okay. We'll, uh, we'll take them. We'll work on our methods. We'll try and perfect them for next year so that we don't have this kind of a mix up. I don't know. Rice fish are just like the most fertile things ever. Like, I don't know. Their eggs just float in the air and land places they shouldn't. I don't know. Just a heads up for all the legit fish food lovers out there. We are super low on both sizes of nano. So what, there's four bags of that. That's honestly, they're probably gone by now, but I think there's like 18, maybe 17 bags of the two ounce nano left. We're good on everything else for a while, but this stuff, uh, I got to order some new bags and I have that as sort of a bottleneck. So I don't know when we're going to have this back in stock, hopefully before the holidays, but if you need to get some, cause you're out and you love it and you need it, fish are barking at you they're hungry grab some soon this thing is way cooler with the light pointed down on the tank like that huh i swear i was just sitting here and i swear i saw a minnow baby like shoot across i know there's a bunch of like turbidity in this tank and it would be easy to confuse wait was there one right there i don't know i might also be just hallucinating minnow babies that would be on track with <laughs> what i've been experiencing lately but yeah there it is you guys see it yeah, right there. Right there. You see it? Where, the, where is it? I can't get the camera to focus on it. Where is it? Maybe if I... You see it? Yeah. That's a fish. I'm not crazy after all. Unless it's a freaking rice fish that somehow the egg lived for three months on this plant. Oh my God. Well, it's kind of dark, but it's also kind of a vibe. So we're gonna roll with it. But I just got these nets from Amazon that I picked out because I thought they looked pretty similar to what I've seen people have online for where you're like trying to isolate fish to view them in the tank without having to take them out of the tank. This is more for like guppies and just other fish that you wanna be able to look at closely without moving them. These minnows are just way too dang quick for anything. They're hard enough to catch with a normal net. So I don't know, we'll have to mess around with these, but just wanted to show these off. I thought they were kinda of cool. We're gonna try this little light situation and just let the peace lily do its thing with the natural light. Try this, see if the plants grow a little bit better. Like dwarf sage isn't super hard. The only other plants in there are the octopus plant and a random Amazon sword. I'll let you know if they actually decide to grow. Hard to tell with such a weak kind of crappy light, but you never know. I don't think there's anything else worth sharing about the tank. Not the most exciting update, but just wanted to fill you in, let you know that basically it didn't leak. I think the lighting just holds the key to this whole thing from turning into like something really cool. So. I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know on the plants, how they do, the lighting situation. That's pretty much it, guys. The pond tank hybrid thing is currently now a tank, but it will be a pond again very soon. Well, not very soon, but eventually. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to sit here and enjoy my tank. See you next time.